Hello, I'm going to show you some general WordPress content editing tips today. There's loads of help online um, about using WordPress and in itself it's it's really straightforward anyway. So I'm going to um, just stick to a few tips, an overview and also a couple of things that's specific to the Dukesfield build. So if we first of all go into the pages you can navigate the pages um, in the admin area or you can once you're logged in you can navigate the pages in the uh, front end area of the website and then click edit page uh, when you're on the page that you want so I'm going to show you the documents home page first of all so we select edit page here when you're on um, the edit page uh, area and this applies to the posts as well the blog section um, and also to a certain extent the transcriptions you presented with a uh, title area which is exactly what uh, what you would expect it it is it's worth noting if you change the title it's it's also I would recommend changing the what we call the slug as well which is the short uh, bit at the end of the uh, of the URL just to so that it matches the slug isn't allowed um, any spaces so um, if if you change the title the quick the easiest thing to do is delete this and then just click OK and it will it will automatically generate one based on the new title so in the main text area you've got essentially a, a the same type of functionality as you have with a with a simple word processor. Um, you can you can basically kind of type text. You can highlight text to make it a linkable to another page or to an external page. You can create subheadings. Um, you can set certain text to be bold. Control B does that, or you can click the the button there. Um, italicized text, bulleted list, number lists, um, alignment, all, all the kind of usual things and I advise that you, you kind of keep that to a minimum you know bold, bold up some text if you want to or create a bulleted list but I wouldn't go over the top trying to style it um, with I shouldn't have clicked that. Style it with you know with fancy colours or anything like that. Just keep it keep it nice and straightforward. And the, in the front end, it will pick up the styles of the whole site and have a nice consistent appearance. So if we scroll down a little bit, we've got various um, uh, statuses that we can set. It actually keeps multiple revisions so that if you if you kind of make a mistake and want to go back you can do that you can this page is published which means that it's publicly viewable if you wanted to make it not published um, pending review or draft will mean that only administrators can see the page and in the front end uh, people who aren't logged in will only will basically get a, a, a missing page if they try to view that, that specific page so if you're part way working through um, a, a large document and you want to save it for later but you're not ready to publish it, you just do select save as draft. Further down we've got a few um, page attributes, We're just off the bottom of the screen there. Um, you can choose whereabouts in the page hierarchy this page resides. So for instance this is a child page of the research page. Let me just make this window smaller so I can scroll down. You can also choose the template that this page uses. Um, most pages will use a default template. We have, we have a few special case um, pages. The advanced search is specifically for, the, for, for that page as is the interactive map. The section hub pages are pages on which we automatically list child pages as, as nice um, selectable kind of sub navigation boxes and the record office landing page as um, indicated in, a, in another video is specifically for 
for that purpose. There are multiple record office landing pages and those are the ones that you link the, the transcription batches to. Um, this page is actually a section hub and because it's a section hub we get we get some extra we get some extra functionality down here. We've got a, a second WYSIWYG area, another editor, and if we just view the page, and I'll do that in a new tab, we'll see what, what that means. Basically the, the primary WYSIWYG area here with the Northeastern history, ending with the project logo at the top. Project logo at the top is above the secondary navigation into the into the hub sub pages and then the second WYSIWYG area scrolling down appears below so you can choose using this functionality you can choose how much appears above and below this this secondary navigation if you put nothing in the one up here you could have this navigation right at the top of the page um, or you could have it right at the bottom by by not putting anything in the one below. So I'll come on to, to short codes. We've written a few short codes specific for the specifically for the Dukesfield project. This short codes all have the same kind of pattern. They're what started and finished with um, the square brackets, and basically this invokes a little bit of uh, a little bit of code. Uh, to insert a special feature. Uh, in this case, just just before just before the, the the end of this section, we have a document search shortcode, and that inserts all of this functionality here. Um, it requires that you know it's not something you could do in the word in the uh, WordPress editor, and this is a kind of a shortcut to a quick search into the archives. So when we search for say Thomas. Quick search. It takes us to the advanced search with the search term Thomas pre-filled, and it does a it does a search and returns us all of the all of the documents it finds um, with the with the term Thomas in them. The other short code we've got on this page is uh, one for the document of the day, and that's in below the navigation, so it's in this here. And we've got square bracket random underscore document and that inserts the document of the day. This will be updated once a day at midnight and um, at random and just gives you a gives you a preview of the uh, of a random document from the from the archive section. If you click on it, it takes you through to its its own page here um, where you've got the where you've got the full, the full document, and also any comments that may have been submitted or notes, if there's if there were notes prepared from the tr transcriber. And uh, just a note on functionality, um, as agreed, we we have a we have a toggle on the uh, on the monospace font. Some people like it, some people don't. So we give users the choice, and that uh, that's remembered per user using the system. So I just quickly go back. Oops. So I've got a I've got a bit of, of, of text here. This is still to do. We need a we need a image gallery inserting here to just show some of the original documents as, as scans presumably, um, and we would use the Flickr widget, Flickr short code to insert the gallery here, and we've got an example of the. Of the uh, the Flickr gallery in action somewhere inside the inside the activities. I think the cook-offs have one. So here we've got a we've got a gallery going on in the cook-offs page. If we go to edit page, you'll see how that's inserted. Here we've got the Flickr short code. That's a space and then album equals and inside double quotes the long. Um, unique ID given to that album by Flickr. You get that in the URL on on Flickr. In terms of general 
editing, good practice, never ever paste from Word. Um, if you do that, WordPress will now does quite a good job of removing the formatting when you do that, but I would I would not trust it. I would either type directly into here or paste from Word into something that's plain text like Notepad um, and then copy again and play paste it into here. Or alternatively, you're using something like Chrome, you can, um, when you've selected it from Word, you can right click and select plain, paste as plain text or use control shift V instead of control V. Check that that's um, definitely not, you know, if, if it looks formatted, if you're picking up colours or a slightly different font here, then it's then then you, you really need to make sure you, you, you clean up the formatting from that. Um, for advanced users, if you're wanting to do a, a little bit of HTML, there's, a, there's tabs here and you can see exactly what it looks like um, in, in terms of the in terms of the format and as you can see it's relatively clean in here we've just got this um, special h2 tag to tell it that this is a this is a heading 2 if you were, were to paste some word into the here and then look at the text you would see all sorts of horrible code going in here and it's and it's potentially going to ruin the look uh, or behavior of the site so Take care pasting from, from Word. I recommend typing in here directly, saving as draft and coming back later. Use this as your word processor directly. And that's, I think, about it in terms of just general content editing. There are, as I say, additional fields down here. Um, you can choose to remove the page title from the page or overrule the page title as specified up at the top. The reason you do that is the the title up here is the by default the one that appears up in the up in the title bar of the of the browser up here. Um, and it also appears by default in menus and navigation. So if you've got a if you've got a long title that isn't going to be isn't going to be particularly pretty in, in the menu or the navigation Put a put an abbreviated title here, and then overrule it with a with a longer title here, so that in the navigation you get the nice short one, but when you're actually on the page, you get the you get the longer title. You can also set up some of the some of the SEO properties. These aren't visible to humans, um, although the, actually the title tag will that will overrule the value that appears up in the up in the title bar on the browser. The SEO keywords. It's debatable whether you need to you need to actually bother with these anymore, but um, these are the keywords on the page, and it, it tells search engines, or at least suggests to search engines, that these might be relevant uh, for your page to show up in in search queries for the words you put in there. If you use words that aren't actually in the body text, it it, it isn't going to it isn't going to work. This is just a suggestion to search engines. Uh, the SEO keywords and the SEO description. Um, aren't visible to, to, to humans, they're, they're, they're kind of code uh, instructions to the search engines. It may be the case that this SEO description appears in search results under the title um, before, you know, before people click through to your site on, on Google or whatever search engine people are using. I would say these are strictly optional and uh, not really, you don't, they'll be pre-populated with defaults if you don't Fill them in. So uh, unless you're really aggressively trying to trying to market the site, you're probably quite happy to leave those using the defaults. Um, and that's that's it, I think, for for co general content editing. So we've covered short codes. Uh, we've covered not pasting from Word, super important. General simple formatting, the title and the slug, and also the page template that's being used and locating the page in the overall hierarchy of the website. Thank you.